Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a cool navigational technique whereby we can determine where we are in the air by using a DME as well as an arc that comes off a VOR. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first things first, uh, we're here somewhere in uh, lovely Connecticut, which as everybody knows is where I like to fly, I think you can probably imagine why. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to locate where we are in Connecticut by using a single DME, which is going to give us our distance from a position, as well as an arc that comes off of a VOR station. Now there's actually a lot of different techniques that we can use to do this. Uh, this is probably the most common, and it has one little mathy bit that kind of comes in the middle, but I'll kind of show that to you once we do get to that part. Uh, don't panic too much, it's not too mathy. So first of all, I'm going to use Hartford VOR as my particular position to try to see if I can identify. Keep in mind, whenever you're working with a VOR, you want to make sure you successfully identify that VOR, and you want to make sure you're also, uh, again, able to receive the signal from the VOR. So if you're too low or you're too far away, this technique will not work. So let's go ahead and pop back over here. We're going to go ahead and uh, dial in our frequency here into our radio. I'm going to press the CV button. Go ahead and pop this over to 114.90. Pop it over. And we've got ourselves a distance of 11 nautical miles. Next, what we have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and dial this in so that we can determine exactly how far away we are. Oh, we don't need to look at that stuff. I'm going to put that away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to navigation mode, and I'm going to tweak this knob until we center the needle. Now, this is important. And right about there, pause. So now what I've done is I've gone ahead and identified what radial I need to travel to get to that VOR station. In this case, it looks like I'm going to be on a course of 301 degrees. I also noticed that I'm 11 nautical miles away. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So let's go pop back over onto our little map here. I'm going to go ahead and grab our map and oh, 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 well, oh, that, oh, okay, that's going to be a problem. Unfortunately, because this is pointing towards the VOR station and we're measuring from the VOR station, our numbers are not going to work correctly. So what we're actually going to need is the reciprocal heading. Now there's two different ways to do this. Uh, we can do the math, or we could be nice and lazy, and we could just follow this needle straight down to see exactly the fact that you're pointing at a reciprocal heading of 121 degrees. Now the other thing we could do, of course, is if you're one of those people, is we could sit here and crank this thing until it says to as opposed to from. Actually, I'm sorry, I got that absolutely backwards. I was right the first time. So you can take a look here that I'm pointing, if I were to go to the station on 121, uh, but you can see from the station, I'd be about 301 degrees. Now the 301 degrees is the one that we need in this case, because it's from the station. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and reline that up. 301 degrees from the station, 11 nautical miles. So let's go over to our station. Let's go ahead and start our line from here. Give me a candy dandy measure distance. Oh, we're going to go ahead and do this. And remember, this is going to be magnetic. 301 degrees at 11 nautical miles is going to look like... Let's see if we can work this out perfectly. 301 degrees at 11 nautical miles, and it's going to be right there. So that suggests that our aircraft is located right here. So as a matter of fact, if we wanted to, we could come up here, right click, I could go ahead and add a user point here. I could say fix one, you always want to time whatever fixes that particular fix is made. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK, and I've already made a terrible mistake. Now you're probably sitting here going, um, well, you, you corrected that um, is issue with the reciprocal law. What mistake did you make? Well, let me go ahead and show you where I actually am. Let me go ahead and pop the thing on. Boop. And you'll notice I am not where it says I am. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, there's always going to be inaccuracies. I mean, the DME is only so accurate, and the radials are only so accurate as well. You're absolutely correct. But we actually have multiple problems for using this technique. Uh, the first one is, whenever you're using DME, is that you are using what they call slant distance. Um, if I wanted to go ahead and get my Microsoft Paint out real fast, all right? So whoop, this is where we are. This is the DME station right here. This is us in the air. DME actually measures this distance. It does not measure this distance. Because of that, we have to actually take this into account, which is going to be our altitude. Now, the nice thing is all we've done is built ourselves a giant right triangle here. So we can see we know this distance is 11 nautical miles. Excuse my terrible handwriting. We don't know this distance, and we do know this distance. You're probably saying, wait a minute, how do we know that distance? Well, if we climb back into the simulator, we notice that we are at an altitude of 2,500 feet. So does it matter how far above the ground we are? Absolutely not. It matters how far above the ground the DME station is. So if I know I'm 2,500 feet, and I subtract the altitude of the DME station, which fortunately is not too, too difficult to get usually. Uh, let's see here. We'll go to my little VOR navigational aid. Uh, we should probably get something a little bit. Let's go ahead and get some information here, show information about it. We notice that it's in an altitude of 849 feet. That's all we need to know. Because now we can do 2,500. 
could get my calculator real quick minus 839 49 feet means that there's actually a total height of 1651 above the station which means if we pop back over here we know that this is actually 1651 feet so if we needed a more precise measurement and again precision really matters when you're going to be traveling longer distances we just have to solve for a triangle we got ourselves an a we got ourselves a b we got ourselves a c here we already know c we can go ahead and take c squared and go ahead and divide it by these components if you're looking for a simpler way to do it we could just pop over here online, dial everything in. So we know that our leg is 1651, and we know that our hypotenuse, uh-oh, it's 11. 11 nautical miles to feet. Let's go ahead and get it. As long as you're consistent, it does not matter. Which gets us a B, which is going to be our actual distance. We'll go ahead and dial that in here. It's 10.99 nautical miles. I know you're sitting here going, um, that was a lot of work for about 1% more precision. And yes, it is a lot of work for about 1% more percent precision. But if you were an airliner at 36,000 feet, this wouldn't be a matter of 1%. This would be a matter of 13%, which is significant, especially if you're trying to make an accurate measurement. Now, let's demonstrate this whole problem again, but let's introduce a new problem that you're going to encounter. Let me go ahead and clean all my stuff up here real quickly. Go ahead. I have about 1,000 calculators going at a time. And that's this very, very pesky problem we're going to have. And uh, I'll demonstrate it and see if you can figure it out first. So I'm going to go ahead and use Pauling. Actually, I'll use IGN, which is way over here, 11760, as my source of navigation here. Go ahead and unpause real quick. We'll go ahead and pop back over here. We'll do 11760. Switch. And notice, ah, we've got ourselves a signal. Again, we want to measure the two bearing here, which again is going to be critical. So go ahead and point this thing nice and gently. Uh, it's going to look like this. And you can see I've already done everything backwards for about the 50th time here. We're actually not interested in from two. We're interested in the from. Because remember, we're measuring a bearing away from the station, which was my mistake I did earlier. I apologize. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that nice and centered up. And that's looking pretty darn center. I'm going to go ahead and pause right there. Okay. So we are 45 nautical miles away. And we are on a bearing of, it looks like about 100 degrees. All right, let's go pop back over here. Let's go ahead and do our measurement tool again. Measure distance, whoop. Go ahead and measure distance from here. And we're gonna go ahead and do that one out real quickly. Again, we have our magnetic course. I'm gonna go check it real quickly. It was 100 degrees we agreed on. 100 degrees at a distance of 45. 100, 45, 100, 45. 100 magnetic and about 45 nautical miles. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. 100 magnetic and about 45 nautical miles is right there. That's going to be our new fix. I'll go ahead and pop the position. I'll say that uh, da, 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 user points, add user points. I'll make this one temporary. Call this fix two. Press OK. And we expect to be there. OK, let's see what happens. That's actually a fairly accurate fix. Uh, usually I don't get so lucky. But here's the problem. Do you notice that this little arc here is starting to get a little wider? And keep in mind, the distance here is only 45 nautical miles. I'm not measuring this at 150 nautical miles. We have a brand new problem here. And that's the fact that magnetic deviation affects this. Now, in this part of Connecticut, our magnetic deviation is uh, 14 degrees west. In this part of New York, the magnetic deviation is 13 degrees west which means since VOR stations are based on magnetic headings, we actually have to assume whatever the magnetic heading is here versus the magnetic deviation over here, which would actually equal about a total of one degrees. As a matter of fact, it'll actually show you that here in little nav map, that there's a three degree magnetic difference across this entire arc, which means as this distance grows, your accuracy to this position decreases. Now keep in mind, this is actually not an accurate number again, because of that pesky, like I showed you with the uh, Pythagorean theorem over here. But the good news is the farther away from the station you are, the less effect altitude is going to have on the precision of your position. So now I can go ahead and jump back in the aircraft. Go ahead and unpause again, although I think I never actually paused. And you can see I'm just slowly making my way towards that destination. So again, this is a spectacular technique you can use to go ahead and triangulate, actually not triangulate your position, get yourself a very, very quick fix that works really, really well as far as, you know, determining distances as well as bearings. You know, if I needed to make adjustments now, I could then take another one five minutes from now and be able to accurately read that. Now, one of the cool things you can do is you can actually use a DME arc plus a bearing in order to determine where you are as well. But that's for another video. Enjoy.